All right. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, my name's Andrew Root. I am a Drupal developer from San Diego. Uh, I've been doing Drupal for about three years or so, and I help to run the local community in San Diego. So I'm real excited to get up here and support some uh, events like these. Uh, real excited to see a bunch of faces that I saw at San Camp a few, uh, few weeks ago. So excited to be here. Um, you guys probably can't read that that well. It's not really. That's pretty pretty. Uh, probably looks a lot out. better on the, on the computer. It does, yeah. It definitely <laughs> does. Um, I don't really know what to do about that, unfortunately. But uh, I, can you guys can you guys read it? Yeah. You don't know right. Okay. Does anyone know how to do that? We'll be listening to you. It's not this, terrible. Okay, no. good. Because <laughs> I have no idea how to work that thing. That thing is a monster. <laughs> All right, so uh, I wanted to go over the theme system a little bit, particularly hook theme, which is a very important hook in Drupal theming. And I wanted to show you how to read hook themes that have been written in other modules as well as write your own and basically understand what they're doing, how they work, and how some of the associated functions work. So I'll go over how to read them, uh, uh, give a little sample uh, writing, and then also show you uh, how to override theme functions that you found by reading the hook themes. And I'll talk a little bit about pre-process functions, which are really important for getting the right data into your template files. So uh, from reading hook theme implementations, really? OK, great. So that's a snippet from uh, OG theme is the function here. Uh, if you're following along, and happen to have the OG module. This is uh, in OG.module. And I just grabbed it uh, from any module, basically. You can look at the theme. And, and they hold pretty much the same same stuff in there. So I wanted to kind of uh, explain this hook a little bit. So basically, the hook theme is going to return an array of uh, theming hooks that you can then implement and give template files and do preprocessing and do lots of cool stuff with. But you need to basically declare them in a hook theme or the module writer does, or, or someone has to declare these at some point. So for example, in the OG module, or the organics group module, this is the hook theme. And this is defining three particular theming hooks, which are used in various places in the OG module. So you can see in the, well, you can't really see, but trust me, it's there. Um, there's a arguments parameter. Um, and a template parameter and a path parameter. These are all used, utilized here. Uh, I wanted to show you a little bit about what the actual code looks like for each one of them. That really, I can change the machine itself. Really? Yeah, uh, uh, it's not really doing anything. <coughs> It's, it's changed it on my screen, but not on the... Um, anyway, I'll post these so you guys can look at them. Um, and then once again, all the code I'm grabbing is really just from any module. You can check it out. Uh, not, I don't think so. All right. Um, so this is just basically a sample. But I wanted to go over some of the other parameters. I got this information by going to api.drupal.org, which I think Steve showed off in his last session, and uh, something that you should definitely check out if you want to look up the parameters for any theme functions, or really any functions. Uh, I must hit that site 100 times a day, probably, uh, trying to make sure I know that all the parameters for everything. So I use that all the time. And if you look up hook theme on api.drupal.org, it will tell you what the theming parameters are. And that's a little bit better. So the one required thing that you have to add to a hook theme is the arguments. You need to tell it uh, what arguments you can pass into your theme function. And basically, when you call it, uh, you're going to call the theme function with your theming hook. And then you can pass in some uh, extra parameters. And that's what you're defining here in arguments. Um, you could see what that looked like on the last screen if it would display a little bit better. but um, File is another one. This, uh, If you're not going to have the uh, theme functions or the template files 
in or your base module file, it's beneficial to put the file that the actual theme functions live in under the file because that way you don't have to actually include it yourself. Drupal will include it for you uh, as long as you list it there. So it's a good practice to use a theme.inc file uh, that will keep all your theme functions. Um, so you would put that uh, reference in the file area of the hook theme. Uh, another thing you can add is the template. So if you're going to use an actual template file as opposed to a theming function, you would specify the name of the template file here. Uh, I'm going to get into the difference between uh, theming functions and template files uh, here in a little bit. So I'll kind of explain the difference there. But basically in the hook theme, you're going to provide a template if it is a um, template file implementation and file if it's a uh, function, a theming function. Also, it's a good practice to put any template files in their own directory within your theme. So if you do that, you need to specify so where it says path. Also, you can set the preprocess functions, which is really beneficial if you want to have um, some extra preprocess functions. Maybe some are already registered, um, so you can't use the naming conventions, but you can add your own preprocess functions here. I'll get into the use for preprocess functions uh, a little bit later on, but they're really beneficial in keeping your uh, theme template files uh, simple. So, like I said, there are two uh, ways to deal with theme implementations. There's uh, the template files uh, and there are theme functions. And a lot of people wonder what the differences are, uh, why you would use one versus the other. Theme functions are a little bit faster. Uh, they're also um, better for kind of simple, simple theme implementations. Um, template files are a little bit more robust and uh, they work in kind of a way that designers are used to looking at. Uh, they're pretty comfortable looking at a file with a bunch of markup in it, and it's a lot less comfortable for a designer to look at some code with a bunch of escaped characters and uh, functions and variables and stuff like that. So uh, generally, template files are pre preferred when working with a designer. Also, template files are nicer with more complex data sets because you can use uh, preprocess functions to adjust the variables that are available in your template files. A lot of people ask when they're starting looking at template files, what's available to me here? Uh, what, var what variables can I access and what's in those variables? Uh, those things actually do come from preprocess functions most of the time uh, and you can edit those things by uh, having a preprocess function that looks up some of your data. Um, so that's one of the things that makes the template files really powerful. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the uh, template files are usually pretty well documented, um, so that's nice. And also, uh, like I said, the api.drupal.org documents, um, at least for core, all the, uh, all the files and all the functions. So it's a really good way to check all the parameters, see what's available, um, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, like Drupal can trip. Right, yeah. So that's really beneficial to kind of look up what theme functions are available. Um, the other way to do that is to actually look and read the uh, hook theme because uh, if you're looking at a module and you say, what theme functions does this enable? Which ones of these can I override? The first thing you do is you open up that module, you look in the hook theme and say, okay, well, these are the six hooks that this implements, I can change any one of these. And hopefully they're named in an appropriate way that you can actually tell by the name of the hook. You know, where is this? Oh, okay. I can see that this theme function is responsible for generating this part, and I can override that. So generally for more complex theming needs, you generally use templates for that. And for kind of basic formatting, um, use functions. This is what I generally, generally go with. So writing your own hook theme 
Uh, I wanted to just kind of outline the steps if you were trying to kind of familiarize yourself with uh, the hook theme and how the theme function uh, works. Uh, a few things that you would start out with to kind of get your bearings. If you're starting with your own uh, module, the first thing you need is a hook theme to register your implementation. If you're doing this for testing, you probably got one or two implementations and you give them some name that you can recognize later. Uh, then you'll need a hook menu to register a page callback so you can actually see what that's doing. And you'll put some code there which will invoke your theme function. By the way, I'm going to show you this all in code in a second after I go over it. Um, and then um, you'll have a base theme implementation that provides what your piece of content is going to look like if no one overrides your theme. So let me jump out of the presentation real quick and I'll just show you what some of that code looks like. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I have an older version of Drush. I need to update. Huh? Yeah, it's got the same problem, doesn't it? Um, wow. Uh, Uh, I guess I could do that. Let's see. Huh? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> I got some funny stories about that, I'll tell you later. <laughs> um, right. Sorry, I just have to pull this up. That looks like it's displaying much better. So let me just find this, and that way you can actually read this stuff. Okay, here we go. Mm, that's a little bit better. It's kind of off the screen. I think it's closer you can get. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanted to point out here, uh, this is just a very simple module I wrote for illustrating um, how to do theme overrides and some basic module practices, but uh, it's called the, the happy happy module for uh, happy coding. And uh, you see the hook theme here has two implementations. Uh, it's got a happy theme function and a happy TPL. And you notice these actually implement. Uh, this is a theming function where this is the actual template file. So you can see in uh, this lower one, I've implemented the template. Where in the upper one, I didn't do that. Uh, if you define the template, it will look for a template in the path, which I've also defined here. And I've used Drupal get path uh, and told it to look for the module called happy and then go into the sub um, directory theme. And that way, this will work no matter where my module is. If someone happens to you know, put it in the um, global modules directory or something, it'll still work. Um, so you want to make sure you use that function in your path. Uh, so basically this defines two theming functions, uh, which I'll, I'll use here. And uh, one is to illustrate how a template file works, and the other is for a theming function. Um, so then, if you scroll up, I've got a hook menu that defines uh, just basically a page where we can test some of these things out. Um, the page callback is for the happy modules page, which is down here. 
And you see this doesn't really do much except to illustrate a point. Uh, we're basically loading a random node, which I just picked the first node to get some content. And then we're outputting uh, a theme implementation. We're actually outputting each one of these theme implementations. So you can see here, we're calling the happy theme function and passing in a node as an argument. And then below, we're using the happy TPL uh, theming hook and doing the same thing. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, hook theme. We'll start with the happy theme function. So going back down to the theme, you can see this is where we've got that defined. Um, since we haven't defined uh, a name of the um, function here, it's just going to go by the naming conventions. Uh, and uh, as per convention, the file here is going to be, or the function name is going to be the module name, uh, underscore preprocess, underscore the name of the theming hook. So it's going to be happy preprocess happy theme function. So if you look, oh sorry, that was that's for preprocess functions. Uh, I was getting to theme functions. So it's uh, theme underscore and then the name of the hook. So you can see here, this is the theme function that defines what gets output when we call theme with this parameter. And then when we call it with the TPL parameter, you can see in Happy Theme, since we've defined the name of a template and a path, it's going to look there for the template we're going to use. So let me just show you that theme. It's very simple, but you can see in my module directory, I've got a theme folder. And that's got one TPL in there. Uh, if you had a bunch of theming hooks in your module, uh, you probably have a bunch of TPLs here. Uh, and uh, I just basically output that. And all it's really doing is it's got some static text and it's outputting a variable. Um, you see that variable? It's got kind of a weird name. It's called set me. I just wanted to make that something that was uh, not something you've seen before to prove that the preprocess function, which I'm going to show you in a second, is actually putting that there. Um, but uh, the, the point of this is that uh, you can implement a uh, TPL file you can put any amount of markup there, you can put static stuff, uh, and then you can output a bunch of variables. Uh, most commonly, you'll output things like content, submitted, um, post date, author, things that come with the node. But a lot of times in preprocess functions, you'll actually inject more information in there, and then you can output those variables here. So let's go back to the module file. And then we'll take a look here. Um, we've implemented here a preprocess function. So you see we've got a template preprocess uh, and then the name of our theming hook, which is happy TPL. So this part here has to match what's referenced here in our hook theme. And then we take a parameter which is variables, uh, which actually should be uh, passed by reference. There should be an ampersand right there. Because we're not actually returning this variable. We're uh, just changing it. Uh, it should be passed by reference. Um, I'll add that in there later. Um, but you can see what we're doing here. 
in this case, we're making a new variable. You can see set me is that weird variable name that I was referencing in my TPL. And I was just able to use it as a variable. It just shows up there because I've defined it as part of the variables array here in the, uh, the preprocess function. So in this case, we're just making a new one, which is very common to, uh, to inject information uh, with a preprocess function that's available in your template. But it's also quite common to take some information out of there, change it up a little bit, maybe add some markup, and then put it right back in the same place. So preprocess functions are really valuable for putting new information in or basically preprocessing information. Uh, and it makes it so your template files can look really clean. You don't have to have any mathematical operations or any queries or, or anything too complicated in your template files. You do all that stuff in your preprocess functions. You set them as variables. And in your templates, you should really only have very clean markup and you output um, just very simple variables. So I kind of jumped ahead there uh, as I was going through the code to uh, uh, preprocess functions. Um, so, let's see. so this slide just basically lays out um, some of the uh, reasons to use preprocess functions, uh, which is really basically just for the neatness and cleanliness uh, of your template files. Um, it's also nice because if you use them appropriately, people will know that if there's a, a preprocessed function, that's probably where a lot of the data processing is going on. So another section I oh, oh uh, another section I wanted to get to is uh, how to override these theme functions. So when we were looking at how to read the hook themes, we were able to go into uh, in our example the OG module and see what theming hooks were available in that module. And like I said, you can do that with any module and basically look at the hook theme for that module, find out what's available. And if you want to override that, uh, you should be able to look in the hook theme for the default implementation of that. Then you can take from the actual module the entire function, uh, just copy it, and then you can put it into your themes uh, template.php. And then you got to change the name of the first part of the function signature to match the name of your theme. And at that point, you've basically overridden the theme impl impl implementation. Um, so you've, if you've copied the function exactly, you've got almost the exact same thing that you've seen before, but you can modify that without actually hurting anything. So uh, that way you can get a starting point for where you want to go and you can mess with it appropriately um, and you know if you ever decide you want to go back to the default implementation or you want to start over it's really easy to do it that way um, and like I said we want to not have any uh, processing of information or any queries or anything going on uh, in these same functions because that's what our preprocess functions are for um, and then one more thing that's really important to know when you're working on this, uh, particularly when you're just getting started, is that when you add a theme function to your template.php, the, it needs to be added to the theme registry, which only gets rebuilt uh, at certain times, particularly when the cache is cleared. So you have to remember to clear your cache if you're going to put a new theme implementation in there. Because uh, otherwise it won't get picked up and you'll say, you'll keep refreshing, you'll say, hey, where are my changes, where are my changes, oh, they're not there. Uh, you got to clear the cache. Um, so I wanted to show an example of that. Uh, you can do that. It's not recommended to in most cases um, because you can uh, have naming conflicts there. Uh, so it's recommended to use your module name or the theme name. Um, but if you look up hook theme 
uh, I think on api.drupal.org, it will tell you exactly the specificity of uh, several different um, several different ways you can go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, pretty much, pretty much the only um, the only way I ever do it is with the name or the module name. Yeah. From a best practices point of view, mm -hmm. you want to stick with that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's all yeah. All the other uh, the other yeah. stuff is in there. I think for legacy reasons, it's it's been that way uh, and it's still there. But if you look on the documentation, it's pretty much deprecated. It says don't use that, uh, and it is pretty well documented. So uh, all that all that information is there. So I wanted to pull up uh, a random module. This is uh, the OG module, which I used as an example before. And by looking at the hook theme, we can tell what theme functions are available. These ones are um, pretty simple. Uh, let me see if I can find a better example. These are different module. Yeah. I'm just trying to find a module with some more theme implementations that we can take a look at. So I just opened up the UC cart module, which is part of Ubercart. Uh, I'm basically just going to look into the hook theme and see what's available to override here. So I want to look for UC cart underscore theme, which is right here. And you see this is a much more complex hook theme implementation than OG originally had. There are a lot more themable functions and a lot more things you can override because Ubercart has lots and lots of uh, theme functions. So let's take a look for one of these. Uh, UC cart block title. So you can see uh, I'm using NetBeans here and one of the nice features of NetBeans that I use all the time is outline view where you can uh, get an alphabetical list of all the functions which really helps me find particular functions uh, particularly when I know because of Drupal naming conventions, what they're called. Uh, I don't have to search for it. Uh, I can just bring it up here, which is a nice feature. Um, so I can see that this is the theme implementation for that theming hook that I was pointing at earlier. So basically what I would do to override this, if I wanted to get an individual implementation of this in my own theme, is to take this entire function. Actually, no, I'll even grab the comments too take that and I want to put that into the template.php for my theme. I'm working in my local sandbox right now and I currently have a theme enabled called blog buzz. Um, it's just a downloaded theme. Uh, I've made some minor modifications to it just as proof of concept. Um, but here I've got the template.php file open for that and I'm just gonna paste that function right in there and then I need to change the first part of the function signature to match my theme name. Now, actually finding uh, that page is going to be kind of a pain because it's an Ubercard site, so I'd have to set up a product and you go to the page. So I'm not going to show you uh, the actual page that gets rendered for that. But this is basically all you have to do to override a function. And if I wanted to, uh, you know, change the the class that was output here, uh, if that was all I wanted to do, I could just delete this and write some different class, uh, and I can change markup that way. And this will get it looking pretty close to what was there before. Just change some of the markup. Uh, you can change it a little bit, or you can change it a lot. But the point is, you've got a copy of the theme function that you can mess around with without damaging anything at this point. Um, and then of course you have to remember uh, after creating one of these 
uh, you need to clear the cache. Yeah, when in doubt, clear the cache. So I was um, all that stuff that I was showing you was based around Drupal six. Uh, I wanted to try to get in to put some Drupal seven stuff in there, but I didn't really have time to uh, put that in. So that's something I'm interested in checking out, but I haven't really looked at a whole lot yet. Uh, I know one thing that's really interesting is that um, Drupal seven introduces a process function. So there is a pre-process and a process, uh, which is actually kind of beneficial because sometimes um, you want. Uh, a few different modules preprocesses to run before you get a hold of something uh, because you may be relying on a preprocess from some additional module. Um, so Drupal 7 is giving us some more granularity in where we uh, put our data. Yeah, I do think there's more, more to it. <laughs> I, I do not know the specifics. That's just something that I've, I've heard that it's changed. So, um, yeah, I don't really know the specifics on that, but uh, I definitely will be checking that out pretty soon. Um, does anyone have any specific questions on um, any of the stuff I went over? Or, um, hook theme? Or, yeah? Can you talk about in theming specifically? <clears throat> I mean, I know one instance where you would use a preprocess function, which would be like, let's say you have a blog and you want to theme comments. <clears throat> and you want to theme, uh, like, have you ever seen like a blog page where it's like the author's uh, blog, like a, in it, when the author of the blog comments, it's like completely different than everyone else's comments. Uh -huh. They do that with preprocessing. What other, right? And so mm -hmm. what yeah. other um, instances would you use a preprocessing function to theme? Um, there are a lot of instances, uh, a lot of different purposes. Uh, a very common one is, um, say, you know, the submitted information. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't like the way it looks out of the box. You can change a lot of it with CSS, but uh, with a preprocess function, you can mm -hmm. make it so it sh anywhere you use that theme function, it shows up completely differently. So I've seen people um, take the submitted information, change the markup completely, put an image around it, uh, format it, put some JavaScript around it, do a whole bunch of really nice stuff, all very tightly packaged, and then anywhere they use the theme function that outputs submitted, uh, they get access to that. Um, so that's one thing that's really nice. Um, and then uh, another thing is uh, a lot of times they kind of want to join some data, uh, and it's a convenient place to do a, a query on some related data uh, and kind of bring that in. So if you wanted to say um, kind of some relational data, like this is the user and you know they've got another couple things they want to look up about that user to add into the comments. Um, you can use preprocess to get all that stuff in there really nice, uh, nice and cleanly and then it's it's can be moved around and anywhere you use that theme function it's available. Uh, yeah? I was going to say for me I use a lot of you know, reference. So like, you know, have like unlimited image upload field. So the first image has like a pretty big image cache size, and then you want it to display the other images, and then when you click on them, you want it to do like a light box. I think that's kind of what you would use preprocessing for. So you want to change it to output, you know, the sort of light box rel tag on the image. So that's just what I'm yeah. going to do. Mm -hmm. and, and doing it that way makes it really easily packageable, so you can use it in a lot of other places. So um, it's really nice to kind of um, keep things together, uh, keep it all kind of. Any other questions on theming functions, hook theme, that stuff? No? Thank you very much, Andrew. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, I just need to hit stop on the recorder. Um, does anybody want uh, a boff?